Spoilers and offensive content to come. I'm numb, Dave. I don't know why. It's not like we just saw Isaiah get bitch slapped and um by get have a puppy on maybe dying. Oh no. Yuri on ice and they said a scarred me today. So we're gonna watch something that that should be fun. Should be <laughs> It's the darkest episode. Of the <laughs> Watch that happen. I mean Bon Bon the Birthday Cloud, darkest episode of the series. Most important fucking thing. It is a twenty two minute one. But it's Bon Bon the Birthday it's, Cloud. It, it's gotta be a clown coming from Muni though. Oh god, what are Muni clowns like? Ex- clowns are already the worst. Muni clowns are just they're all Kefka. All of them are Kefka. Ouch. Oh, we should probably mention we're Carlos and Dave Anmary of the best damn anime review show on the internet. Uh, we're reviewing something that I guess, like, like I mean, it, it's not an anime, but anime, oh. animation, cartoons, they're all the same fucking thing. And, uh, you know, we were comfortable in our skin calling ourselves an anime review show and still reviewing Star vs. the Force of Evil, Season 2, Episode 14! 24! Teen. Twenty. Bon Bon, the birthday clown. Is episode 14 of season two, two, episode 14. We've agreed. Two, seven. Divided by, or add one, divide by two. <laughs> and now we get the real number. Seven. Oh my God, they all add up to 23. You remember the fucking movie 23? Moving on. I will watch more Steins Gate before I want to think about that movie. <laughs> what were those candles made of? Actually, that makes a great deal of sense because re- relighting candles like that mm-hmm. would need some sort of phosphorus or gunpowder. Oh, yeah, you know what? That I don't know why I didn't think of that. You're right, you're right. Uh, here to explain why he's right is Dave. I mean, these... I mean, here to explain why he was right. Here, he, he has. The... Here to already have explained. <laughs> these days, we would just use like a, a sparkler um, middle piece, so it would light it really quickly mm-hmm. and get go back up, then continue down, do that again. But yeah, no, I I, I can see more explosive <laughs> being used than needed and causing massive disfiguration and death. So maybe this should have been the Halloween episode, because we're basically referencing Stephen King's It now. Man, did you have to remind me of Stephen King? Yes. Yes, I did. You'll notice I didn't say It. I I just said broadly... Stephen King. Fuck, I have developed such a hate on for Stephen King lately. Because I'm like, man, how many talented people have been skipped over? Because this white asshole has written another shitty book. You done? Do you remember Dreamcatchers? Okay. I will res- I actually respect him on, on a couple levels because he's written he writ- wrote all these one-off novels mm-hmm. everywhere. And then the fucker actually managed to write a book series. Dark Tower? The Dark Tower trilogy. I keep hearing those are good. Wh- I will admit, I keep hearing those are which- good. Which Goes through that through a number of books and links every one of his fucking novels in a meaningful way where characters are coming out of these novels into this Dark Tower universe. And it makes complete sense. Hang on, I need to take off my glasses to say what I'm going to say next. What? Yeah. How many people have been skipped over? Talented people. <laughs> A stupid asshole is written. And, and, and just think how hard that must be, seeing as most of his novels take place in Maine. Yeah, yeah, most of them do take place in Maine. <laughs> Stephen King, if you want to be on the show, let us know. We'd love to have you. <laughs> oh, man, if he, if he wants to be a guest on the show, we'll have him. We'll have him in your studio, which totally isn't just a, a, a specialty room in your basement. On with Star. And the Stephen King ripoff. Which will probably be better. Yeah. Okay, Bobo, impress me. Bon Bon. Seance? Really? 
Why would you, of all people, fuck with the spirit world? Okay, Dave, I want you to rethink that. Okay, this story. Really yeah, exactly. <laughs> remember, remember when Marker told her not to summon Hungry Larry? What is the first thing she immediately did? Within two minutes. Within minutes, the summoning has begun. It's like that Helsing Abridged episode where they wanted Alucard to go to Brazil, so they told him he had vacation days and that he's just not allowed to go to Brazil. First place he goes. So Marco said he saw a giant rat up there. Do you think it's one of Ludos? Wouldn't surprise me. As I said, Starco, just friends. But I'm glad to see this. Dave, the viewers can't see this, but I am stroking my chin thoughtfully. Hmm. Hmm. This plays into an image I, I ran across. It was a four panel comic where stars all butterfly powered while pissed off that she lost Marco. And Jenna is basically talking her down saying, you know, you can't always get what you get what you want and they're together. You got her name right, I'm impressed. Yes, yes I did. And they're going to a graveyard. Yeah, Dead Clown Seance. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. School dance or Dead Clown Seance, I'm picking the latter as well. I'm going to the school dance and then going across the road to the arcade. I have been to, yeah, exactly. I've been to zero school dances or I did not want to leave immediately. When I say immediately, I mean in the door. Huh. I kind of want to die. I think I'm going to leave. And did. Yeah. I'm starting to think Glosseric is not the best role model for Star. <laughs> I like how he has a built-in headlamp <laughs> and that it has a click noise. Why not? Just why not? Okay, three things. One. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. I am uh, really digging the Marco Jackie thing. Uh, two. More than I thought I would. Two. They came to the school dance, took a look inside, and immediately left. <laughs> three. Well, well, okay. Before you okay. go on to number three. Yeah, but back on two. Back on two. You have to admit, dances suck. Oh, that, they're terrible. That was bad. That was the. That was probably the best dance school dance I've seen, because at least there was a basketball game to watch. Ouch. <laughs> I, I, I don't see that as an improvement. <laughs> Number three. I think I made a mistake. Where what do you mean? the fuck is Brittany? You remember Brittany, right? Brittany Wong? The girl that hated Star? She had the party bus, didn't invite Star, they came along anyway. Oh, she was oh. the cheerleader. Well, yeah, we have not seen her since an, a, an episode in season one. I forget which one. Yeah, but they killed her. They killed her? When did they kill her? I just figured they killed her off. Is that like the little girl from Family Matters who went upstairs one day and never came back down? Yeah. And they just forgot she existed? She's still on the party bus somewhere in the middle of the Alpha Quadrant. Folks, is Brittany Wong dead? Did did I miss this? Let us know in the comments. Because yeah, we haven't seen her forever. Where is Brittany? Where's... <laughs> to, to paraphrase Spoonie, where's Frank Stallone? I hope Frank Stallone shows up in this episode now, along with Reb well, Brown. Well, we are bringing a clown out, so yeah. The problem is, it, it, whatever side Reb Brown is not is losing this. Except when he played a bad guy. Yeah, that, well, well, I, what I mean is, uh, like, like, let's say Ludo or someone attacks them and Reb Brown is on their side. Well, this is obviously the series finale, because they're not winning that fight. <laughs> Well, they are bringing in a clown, so it could, be, it could be an amalgamation of the two. Red Bon Bon, the Red Brown Clown? Yeah. He'd be like, ho, 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 yeah! Machine guns. Okay, why didn't Gloucester just make a fire somewhere else instead of in the book by sacrificing a page? Probably because he wanted that spell to be gone. Also, there was a drawing of the rat in the page, and again, more rats before. You said it was going to be a Muni clown. I'm thinking you're probably right, but that clown might be Ludo. We'll see. It would be a, a, a great place to stage an ambush. In a graveyard, when they're busy with something else. Yeah. 
Or those could just totally be, be Muni. Yeah. Um, rats. Rats. <laughs> That's a line cross. It was already a line cross just spying on them. Yeah. That, that was some Superman Returns shit. And and then her 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 jealousy and anger about it uh, made, made something bad happen. It was a fascinating episode, and a remarkably well-animated one, too, actually. Yes. There's a lot of little touches everywhere. She fucking, fucking medium dragon punched that asshole with an invincibility frame, and then fucking Hurricane kicked another asshole. Did you hear the smack on that one? I did. Holy shit. So, remember at the beginning when I said that it's Bon Bon the birthday clown? It's not going to be the darkest episode yet. <laughs> but I have a lot to say. And I still need to gather my thoughts. So, Devaniel, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors of going first on this one. <laughs> Luda's descendant. Of? Of the royal family. Probably through that dark. Eclipsa? Eclipsa. Queen of Darkness. So is Toffee. I'll bet. Hmm. I will bet that most of the monsters that we see now are actually descendants of, of the Muni Royal family. Well, I did say in that one episode where they saw Eclipse, I think it was last last episode, mm -hmm. that uh, maybe monsters have a legitimate claim to the throne. Some or all of them. And the fact that Glosser said that exact line means that that has to be true at some point. Yeah, I don't think he was talking to Ludo. I wonder if he wasn't talking to Eclipsa directly. And maybe it's not Toffee talking to Ludo right now. Oh, okay, I wasn't thinking that. But still the same, we were on the same idea that it involved Eclipsa, Queen of Darkness somehow, and that's yeah. why he said Milady. Dave, why is this show just really light and silly one episode and then the next provides me an episode that is... One of the best episodes I've seen out of anything. Well, I don't know about that, but... I, I'll argue for it, but please finish your thoughts. Well, I love I loved seeing Star be so conflicted over Marco. Mm -hmm. I've joked about, you know, just friends, but it's obvious that they were going that direction. The Blood Moon mm -hmm. appearing there for Marco is another good one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... But I like, I like him and Jackie. I like the synergy between the two of them. And I, and honestly, I like um, Jenna and Star. But just friends, right? No, I can't do that to you. I need to be better than you. Uh, you've already failed at that. Fuck <laughs> your face. <laughs> so, yeah, this I, I do like that we actually saw the clown. And then, he <laughs> and then he got immediately sent away, KO'd, sent to another dimension. We know it's not that death sentence, but... No. But I, I like that he popped up and he wasn't malevolent or anything else. It was like, hey, I'm back! <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, the rats, I thought, were just going to be a, a throwaway that it wasn't, you know, Ludo's rats, but it was. Damn! So No wonder they needed 22 minutes for this one. <laughs> I really wish this one wasn't called Bon Bon the Birthday Clown, though I appreciate the throw-off that it is. <laughs> oh, because that was not only the best episode of Star, I think, mm -hmm. even above St. Olga's, which is still up there. I think it's my number two. But that episode was just expertly put together front to back. Like... If every episode of Star was as good as this, this show would not only be on the Gravity Falls Steven Universe level, it would be a, it might well be, it, like, I, I rank Steven Universe the best thing on TV, and Gravity Falls is not that far below it. If every episode of Star was this good, yep. this thing would be above Gravity Falls. I'm not even yep. fucking hey. joking. Because this, everything about this episode was so well done. Uh, they have in in it. It was it, it was kind of a cliche episode in a way, but it also avoided a lot of the common trappings of this kind of episode. Jackie 
is awesome and nice and funny, and we flesh out her personality a bit more, mm -hmm. uh, which the show's been desperately hurting for. This was as much, uh, this was a star episode for sure, but it was also a Marco episode. It was definitely about our, our, our protagonist and the lead support. And we got to see Marco overcome fears and, 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 and kind of evolve his character. We got to see Star realize her feelings are complicated and evolve her character. Mm -hmm. The use of music in this episode was really good. It was actually, for the most part, very muted. They didn't have a lot of it, a lot of music, but the music they did have was very dire. And and, yep. and it, it was near the end when Ludo ambushed them and t was taking the book. We saw Star's fallibility, which is an awesome thing to see because sometimes, sometimes the show's just uh, you know a protagonist needs fallibility, and we got to see that on display. We got to see that she did cross a line with spying on Marco and then uh, a, her emotions turning her magic against her. We got to see Ludo in top form, which we haven't really seen since... Uh, he beat the crap out of the rats uh, uh, ten episodes ago. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Granted, he hasn't shown up really since then. He's been around, but like the last time he attacked Star, it was the best he ever did, but he still lost. Yeah. And this time, this was a successful operation. This was just... Like, yeah, okay, Luck was on his side a little bit, but he, like, he sent his... Like, the rats were obviously sent ahead, because Marco talked about seeing them. Yep. He planned out his attack, he carried it out. You would think that even if this had failed, it would have been an easy an easy learning experience to come back full force later. Mm -hmm. You could tell that Ludo is truly becoming a formidable, yep. awesome villain. Every character on display here was done so well. It worries and, me a little bit, though. How so? Well, okay, Ludo's become formidable, yes. Mm -hmm. But if it does turn out that he's being assisted by um, the Dark Queen... Uh, e uh, Eclipsa? Eclipsa. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that he'll sink back down to his old level or something near it the moment they reveal that. That, I, what, that he didn't build himself up by his own powers. I do want to see Ludo continue to evolve. I don't want to see him devolve to what he was last season. Because last season he was not only a one-dimensional villain, he was also boring. Yes. In this season, he's been mostly really good. Ooh, what if Toffee... There's a lot to unpack in this episode, too. That's another thing. This was a great lore episode as well, because yeah. compounding what we've seen about past queens and the Blood Moon Ball and all that, we, we get to add another another layer of depth to our characters. And perhaps the greatest thing about this episode, at least for me, is that... Uh, you remember in Gunner Creek Court how I was pining for the longest time for Cat and Annie to be an item, because yep. I thought Cat had feelings for Annie. And then Pass came along, and turns out that uh, she's had feelings for Cat, and Cat tried is currently in a relationship with Paz, and they're working out really well for each other. And how, in just a couple of pages, uh, the guy the guy who writes that is Tom Siddell, right? That guy, so. that guy in Gutter Creek Court made me a total Paz Cat shipper in like a couple of panels because they were just so adorable together. Mm -hmm. This episode has made me a Marco Jackie shipper by itself. I think they have great chemistry together. I think they work off each other really well. It's great that Jackie isn't just Brittany. And, yes. and where is Brittany? But we'll talk, we already talked about that. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but now I'm worried about something different. I was, I was, I was worried that I wanted, the ships I wanted to happen were Starco or Star and another girl. I didn't really care who it would be because I hate heteronormativity, right? Uh, I like Star and Marco together, but after seeing Marco's evolution these couple of seasons and seeing Jackie be a more fleshed out person, now not only do I ship them together, now I'm scared that fate's going to rip them apart. When I, like, when I saw that Blood Moon when we were watching it, I, I, I was thinking to myself, no. No, fuck you, fate. No. Um, uh, uh, why Marco and Jackie work. Uh, why would fate try to interview? I hope. I hope that. The, I, I hope that Marco stays with Jackie. Do you remember that Justice League Unlimited episode where 
Hawk girl learned that she had a future son with with uh, yep. John Stewart, and John Stewart says, "I'm still staying with with Vixen because you know what? I'm not letting fate decide my my relationships. I'm st- I still love Vixen. I love that, and I hope that happens here because Marco and Jackie. This one episode has shown amazing chemistry. I don't want a cliche thing that happens where it turns out they're not compatible and they just go their separate ways or break up. Even though if they're gonna break up, I hope it's amicable, right? Because I like Jackie." Mm-hmm. But now I want the Jackie Marco pairing, and now I want Star to kind of go closer to Jana, break that heteronor- heteronormativity a bit, and now I want that strong Star Marco friendship that you've been pining about since the beginning that I was dismissing because I thought Starco was a total thing. This episode has completely changed all my ships and made me scared that my new ships are now not going to happen. That was a good episode of anything. Yep. That thing was the Bon Bon the birthday clown, which I wish did not was not that I wish that was not its name. <laughs> Very little Bon Bon is is easily the best star. It's one of the best episodes of anything I've seen. It is truly good, like masterful. Like I'm gonna watch this again a couple of times before the next star episode, which is probably a month or two away now. Yep, because now we're in hiatusville because this was the mid season finale. So uh, the rest of season two will be next year, probably. Oh my yeah, the, god! Yeah, the season has fifty-two episodes. I want to fucking giant swing you so hard into something <laughs> sharp and painful. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to totally railroad your your thoughts. <laughs> Every little touch in this episode was good too. Like they did a lot of shots where they they just showed. And for all my complaining about anime, this is something anime does very well. They'll show things like a shot of a person's arm or their their foot or 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 something where you just see their body move in a way to indicate their mood. Mm-hmm. And they'll they'll frame that so that you can see that little body language. And they did that a lot in this episode, like just stuff like when Star was trying to call Marco. And we just see a shot of her hips and her sitting, like, with her her knees up and her arms crossed around them. Just to see her in that guarded position, calling them, that was so, that was such a good shot. And to show Jackie just casually put her feet up on Marco's lap, then she's so cool with it and he's so tense. And it showed how tense he was just from, Mm -hmm. from expression. And she's all just totally calm. And it not only shows that Marco is obviously still very tense and nervous around her, but it shows that she is very relaxed around him. It was natural. It felt really good. And, and the, their kiss that happened, that also felt perfect. I'm glad the, the f- a phone call didn't interrupt that. Yeah. And it played out well. Like, when the blood moon happened... I, again, I'm worried about fate intervening, and I hope Marco doesn't allow that. But I do like that, of course, Star, he still cares about Star. And he goes back and he's like, wait a minute, that was weird. And then he checks his phone, he sees 56 missed calls, he immediately goes, oh, she's in trouble. You know, and I like that Jackie was participating. I like she was fucking swinging at rats well, with her skateboard I, I, protecting I, I, Jenna. I like that Jackie's first reaction wasn't like, why are you thinking about Star right now? Yeah, exactly. She could have easily, they could have easily made her the the, the cliche she horrible did. person. Yeah, and they didn't. Jackie's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's great for Star's development, because that makes it difficult for Star to deal with. Yeah. And I'm hoping that instead of the cliche Starco fate thing, that that means that Star comes to accept that. That would be that would be cliche breaking in and of itself, mm-hmm. right? Oh my god, this episode. This, oh, this was a good episode. It was super good. I was not expecting this episode, man. This show... I wish there were more episodes like this. I still want some of the little filler stuff. I just don't want as much as the show has given me. Mm -hmm. And I still don't think Star is a bad show by any means. It's at its worst. It's still really good. I haven't hated too many episodes, but God damn, man, that was, that was quality right there. It was Dave. We have a website. And Marave XYZ. You missed a dot. You missed a dot. Anime Rave dot XYZ. Okay, now with, a, now with a little more passion this time. Anime Rave dot XYZ. Booyah, Grandma, that's what I'm talking about. Because the Anime Rave, best anime reach on the internet. Sign it off. Thanks for playing off me. <laughs> <laughs>